This is the Financially Simple Podcast, the show dedicated to destroying the complexities of money for today's small business owner. The content in the show is for informational purposes only. This show is not investment advice. Instead, seek help from a competent financial advisor or conduct your own due diligence. Justin Goodbread, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Heritage Investors, a registered investment advisor only conducting business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. Registration is not an endorsement of the firm by securities regulators and does not mean the advisor has achieved a specific level of skill or ability. Here's your host, pizza-loving, certified financial planner, Justin Goodbread. And welcome back to the Financially Simple Podcast. Today, we're going to continue our deep dive into the discussion of cash flow for us business owners. And we're dealing specifically with personal finances. We're on the personal side of things. You know, I spent the first year dealing with business side of things. And as I'm dealing with personal finances on the podcast, my ears are attuned to the conversation I'm having with clients and prospective clients, and it's my friends and colleagues out in the marketplace. A prospective client reached out to us through Financially Simple, and they said, hey, Justin, I need some help. You've been talking about selling your business. I am you know, mid-50s. I have a successful business. We make about $10 million a year in revenue. Hey, man, I need help. I don't know how to sell. I don't know if I should sell. What's the process, et cetera, et cetera. And so I began talking with this individual. They reached out to me at Justin at FinanciallySimple.com. I've had individuals reach out to me on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram. I had a couple people make comments on YouTube that I've made shot videos out of. So I'm going to tell you to check us out on social media. Or if you have a question, email me at Justin at FinanciallySimple.com. I'll be more than happy to reach out to you. I was talking with this individual, nonetheless, and we were just talking through their life a little bit in our initial 10-minute introductory phone call that we do free of charge to all prospective clients. And he made a comment to me. He said, Justin, my spouse, my wife, works for a business, and she's getting an unexpected bonus. Man, what should we do with it? Now, obviously, I couldn't give them advice because they were not clients, but I could think about it. And I started asking questions around the dialogue. You know, hey, I'm a business owner. My spouse, husband and wife, doesn't work for the business full time. Instead, they work for a company. And all of a sudden, they get a bonus, an unexpected bonus. And I started thinking through that. And I'm like, man, that could really wreak some havoc. I wonder how I would deal with that if it was one of my clients. And lo and behold, about a week later, it actually happened. I'm going to deal with that topic today on the podcast. And I've titled today's podcast, A Business Owner's Employed Spouse Receives a Bonus. How should we deal with it? And the reason why I say how should we deal with it is because anytime that a true planner or a true tax efficient planner is working with a team of CPAs, attorneys, CFPs. Anytime we're working together, the team is trying to minimize your tax burden, minimize your interest carry, minimize your insurance carry so we can maximize your net worth gains. We're trying to grow your net worth. That's ultimately the goal we're trying to do. And so as I'm thinking through this, I'm like, you know what? If all of a sudden, let's say Miss Emily was working for a company somewhere and she received a, like this individual did, a $60,000 bonus, you know, it could cause some problems for me. Number one, it could blow me out of the phase out, the QBI um, deduction. It could phase me out. So I'm in a particular industry, like many entrepreneur doctors, like many professionals, we're in industries that if we make more than $315,000, we begin phasing out our 20% qualified business income deduction. And all of a sudden, if Miss Emily made some money, man, that could really hurt my planning. I'd have to come up with some additional planning to try to reduce my income to stay beneath the QBI phase-out deduction. It could blow through some other phase-out. Let's say I wasn't in the two fifty three hundred thousand dollars range in income, and I'm not saying it's my income, I'm just using that as an example. But let's say that now I'm in the one hundred thousand dollars range, and we get a sixty thousand dollars bonus. I could potentially phase out of Roth IRA contribution limits. I mean, there's so many phase outs that I could push just because of a bonus income. The other thing that could happen is I could end up hurting my social security planning. I don't want to do that. I want to maximize my social security benefit. So as I start thinking about all the bad things <laughs> that could happen, imagine that bad things that could happen with income, right? The bad things that could happen whenever we start making money, I start to realize that there are some really interesting plays that you could do here. So I was like, well, okay, let's say that Emily worked for another company somewhere and she would have made sixty, seventy thousand dollars in income in addition to what I produce as the business owner. What would I do? 
Well, the first thing I would do, as we talked about in previous episodes, is I would draw my T-chart out, the power T, and on my T-chart, I would look at, okay, here's how much money I need to spend on my personal side. Here's how much money I'm taking home that I'm not spending. All of a sudden, I have 50, 60, 70, 20, 30, 40, whatever the number is that comes into my family. You know, the first thing I would do is probably reduce my draw, my dividend, my take-home pay, if you will, from my company. I reduce it. Well, Justin, why would you do that? Just imagine as a business owner, what would you do with an additional 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars of pure profit in your company? And that's exactly what this individual, this prospect decline I talked about. I said, you know, what would you do with this additional revenue? He's like, man, Justin, dude, I would solidify my marketing campaign. I would solidify this particular bidding process that I need to work on in my company. I would work on hiring somebody in to build up my CRM system. So he started instantly telling me what he would do with his additional revenue. I said, well, why don't we do that? Why don't we cut your draw or cut your dividend percentage by creating an expense in the company to build the company out? with the equal amount of money that we were already budgeting from your spouse's bonus. And ultimately, we were able to manage, this individual is going to be able to manage the amount of money they're having coming to their family because of the bonus structure, because we're able to offset it on the business side. So we could go in and create expenses in the business. We could also go in and increase the deferrals. So we could create profit sharing in the business with this extra money that we don't need at home. We could create profit share. We could maybe enter in a cash balance plan. I've used those a lot for business owners. We may be able to add our spouse to the payroll, as we talked about in the past, and use their deferral money in their 401k or their 403b or their SEP or whatever particular allocation that we're working with or account type we're working with. So there's a question that automatically comes to mind whenever the spouse receives bonuses. Is it going to hurt our tax planning? Because if we increase our taxable income, in effect, we could be hurting our tax planning. We also look at it, man, are we going to blow through deductions? Are we going to end up harming the family? Are we transferring a majority of this money away from the family's net worth to third parties? And at this point, you may be saying, dude, I didn't realize planners think this way. Yeah, we do. We're constantly thinking about how can we build net worth? You're listening to the Financially Simple Podcast. Show your support by subscribing to this and our other educational business channels at FinanciallySimple.com. So let's get to the reality, okay? (laughs) I can just imagine if Miss Emily had a job and she's been busting at work and she got a nice bonus. If I, the business owner, goes to my wife, Miss Emily, and says, Emily, look, dear, I realize you've been working at work. And I realize that we're going to have bonus money come in. I'm going to cut my pay so we don't hurt ourselves some taxes. Emily's going to be like, yeah, no, I'm going to use some of my bonus money because I've been the one killing it. I'm going to use that for personal gain or we're going to go on a trip or we're going to do something. So what happens if you're like, dude, I am not going to try to worry about taxes. It's a bonus. We're just going to roll with it. What should I do? All right. First thing I'm going to ask you to do is solidify your emergency fund. Now, you probably could have guessed I was going to ask that. You probably could have, because I'm a huge fan of emergency funds. In fact, I was meeting with a client this week, just last night, actually, yesterday evening, love them to death, good family. Since January, when I met with them in January, so they're on a quarterly rotation with our firm, I met with them in January, and all of a sudden, both husband and wife went from being W-2 employees to now business owners in two different ventures. That is a major disruption in their financial life. So instantly, I'm like, guys, how's your emergency fund? Now, we were running three months worth of expenses. And I said, guys, I really need to bump that up to six, seven, eight, nine months worth of expenses because I'm not sure right now, neither are you, what your life's going to hold in the next little bit. So we did. We converted some of our intermediate savings amounts over into their emergency fund just to help them protect them for the next little bit. So the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is to solidify your emergency fund. Look, life's going to happen. If you don't have your emergency fund, you're going to end up having to use debt as a crutch when life happens. And I just, I'm not a fan of that. What happens though, if your emergency fund is in good shape, what do you then do? Well, the second idea you could have is you could go in and defer the bonus in your spouses. If you're the business owner, we're talking about the spouse who's receiving the bonus. You could defer the bonus into the spouse's retirement account. 
And we've actually done this a couple of times in the last little bit with clients where the employee spouse, the non-business owner spouse receives a bonus. We'll go in and maximize the 401k with the bonus, especially early in the year. So remember, if you're over the age of 50, you can put in 25,000 this year. If you're under the age of 50, you can do 19,000 this year. So many times if a bonus comes into play, I'll tell the person receiving the bonus, look, let's go ahead and increase your withholding amount and maximize your 401k as to reduce taxes on this bonus. That's a strategy you can do. Now, there's a warning I have here. It's a warning I've learned here in the last couple of years. If you are in a plan that the company matches, you need to make sure that the company is going to match the full bonus. Sometimes they don't. So that's a warning I have. We actually had a client that we elected to put in the bonus for a complete one-time funding of the 401k. Come to find out, the client had read a summary plan document. And I'm going to be honest, I probably should have asked for the summary plan document and checked it versus taking the client's perspective. I learned a lesson in this. We look back a year later, I'm like, wait, where's the match on this? There should have been like $6,000 that went on the 401k. And come to find out the company didn't match a lump sum contribution. They only do it from a monthly or weekly payroll deduction. So if you're going to bonus in your 401k, just check that. The third thing you can do is you can pay off unsecured debt. Do you happen to have a credit card? Yeah, knock it out. Get rid of it. Do you happen to have a student loan? Yeah, get rid of it. Do you happen to have a car that's like on its last leg that you still owe money on? Yeah, pay it off. I like to get out of debt. This is basically bonus money. It's money that we're including, included into our cash flow. Let's go ahead and knock out the debt. Like, Justin, I didn't realize you're so debt adverse. Yeah, if you listen to me for a length of time, you know that I'm not a big fan of debt. The only debt I don't mind dealing with is a mortgage debt. In fact, I love you having a long, large mortgage. But even then, you may, may take a small amount of this money and make an extra payment on your mortgage. It will help you long term. So whenever you have a bonus, you want to knock out your unsecured debt, your credit cards, your student loans, things of that nature, and get debt free, friends. That's an unbelievable feeling. Or... You may want to pay a little bit extra to your mortgage, but I don't want you putting all the money to the mortgage. I'm going to say that again. I really don't want you paying off the mortgage. And that's where math comes into play. I've done a video on this. It's on YouTube if you want to check it out. The fifth thing you can do is you can invest in non-retirement assets. So oftentimes I'm talking about placing money into 401ks, 403bs, 457, the IRAs, Roth IRAs, HSAs, all these type of A account, right? Or K accounts or B accounts, whatever you want to call them. Now I want you to think about non-retirement assets. And you really don't want to approach retirement as a business owner having the majority of your money in qualified accounts. It creates a problem for us from planning purposes in the distribution of assets. The perfect strategy is to have a roughly an equal balance or the majority of your money in tax-free accounts, i.e. Roth IRAs or HSAs for health purposes. And we want to have a fair amount of money in non-qualified or monies that are taxable every year. And if we have a fair amount of money in the IRAs, then we're going to try to figure out how to blend, how to take a distribution blending effect and what percentages of your particular asset mix we should spit out each and every year. And in order for me to do that, for me to make your net worth grow to maintain in retirement or grow rapidly over your life, I need to have a little bit of non-qualified monies. In fact, I need to have a fair amount of non-qualified monies. If you listen to the podcast for any length, you know that one of the goals I have is for you to grow your business where you can sell it. Knowing that such a few amount of people actually sell their business for a profit, we already are walking up against a huge mountain. But if you are able, if you listen to me, if you listen to other planners like me and they're helping you grow your business to the point where you can sell it, then the day you sell your business, you're going to have a non-qualified asset. But because it's not certain, because we may not sell our business. And if you receive a bonus money, it's now a good time after the debt's been paid off for you to begin investing in non-qualified assets. And this is just a simple brokerage account. It could be a piece of real estate. It could be gold. It could be something out there that's going to appreciate over time in a taxable environment that we can use that money to help you in retirement provide another stream of income, a different taxable stream of income. So that's the fifth thing you can do is you can invest in non-retirement assets. The last thing I'm going to tell you to do, which you're probably going to say, Justin, this should be the first thing you tell us to do, is go spend the money. But don't spend it on stuff. Don't spend it on stuff. You know, we got so much stuff in the United States. We don't need to buy more stuff. 
No, you're going to be more fulfilled with that bonus if you'll spend that bonus creating a memory. Is there a particular vacation that you guys want to do? Is there a particular event? Man, I can't tell you the impact going to New York City with my kids last year, my daughter and my wife, and helping in a ministry, taking time off work, spending our own resources as three of us, which was not cheap, by the way. Just going to do that, man, it impacted our life. We still talk about it because we have more fulfillment in our lives spending money on memories, spending money on things that are going to impact our mind for the long term. So if you do receive a bonus and you're you're like, dude, we're going to spend it, spend it on a memory, go on a fancy vacation, go help somebody, go work in an orphanage, go work in a food pantry, do something with that time or with that resource that you've worked so hard for that you're not going to forget. And I like, will just, I'm going to go buy a new car. Yeah, I hear you. But in a couple of years, unless you just absolutely need a new car, in a couple of years, it's really not going to matter. You're not going to remember what cars you had. I mean, think about it. I deal with people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s now on a pretty regular basis. And man, so many times, wood, hay, stubble, the stuff we try to strive for so hard on earth, it just becomes distant. It really is a moot point. So I hope that gives you some insight. If you are a business owner and your spouse receives a bonus, they work for another company and they receive a bonus, it's not as easy as you think. It could cause you harm, but it also could create opportunity and it also could give you leverage to place your positions in a better situation. So with that, we're going to wrap up this episode. Look, I know life is hard. I know life is good. And man, bonuses, who thought they could be frustrating? But they can. Money doesn't have to be frustrating. Let's continue to make our lives at least financially simple. Y'all go out and make it the best day of your life. You've been listening to the Financially Simple Podcast. For more business and personal financial help and information, head over to FinanciallySimple.com today.